Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. So um, I can't believe that it's been 25 years since your breakout album. Uh, where has time gone? I'm sure it's kind of been fast and slow for you. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Fast and slow. I think that's a great way to put it. You know, it's, it's interesting because on the one hand <clears throat> you say 25 years and it is just mind boggling. It's hard to even conceive of it. Uh, and yet at the same time, yeah, I mean, every step of the journey, right. It's been, uh, at times a total slog and at other times, uh, you know, uh, we felt like we've been uh, carried by our friends and fans and teammates and all that. So, um, you know, there've been good times and, uh, and not so great times, but uh, it's really, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it's wonderful that we get to celebrate this record that has completely changed our lives. Sure. Absolutely. Now, um, it seems that a lot of artists, the third album uh, becomes the breakout album and everything you want. It was your third album. Um, why does the third album seem to make a connection with fans? Well, it's a really good question. And to be completely honest with you, I've never even thought about it that way uh, as the third album being the, the one. Um, I can only, I guess, speak for myself as a writer. Um, Certainly as a performer, I didn't have, I didn't have it together until the third one, you know, and um, some people that's probably not the case for some people are probably just, they, they get going and out of the gate, they know who they are, they know what they want to be and how they want to be and that really wasn't wasn't the case for me. Um, so I had to put in my, if I wasn't at 10,000 hours yet, by that point, I was pretty close on the third record. Um, and uh, yeah, it just was, it, it just was time. I mean, I think we, on the one hand, we had really paid our dues by the time everything you want came out. It was, you know, um, six, seven years of, of just constant work on the road, work in studios, and I think by that point, you know, you you do develop uh, a pretty strong sense of, of who you are and also a pretty strong, sen you know, pretty strong armor, right? You need to, you, this business is not an easy one, right? So, right. so, uh, so by that point, I was, I was, I, I wouldn't say I was invincible, but I was also uh, 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 know what shrinking violet, is that what they say? So it was, uh, yeah, it was probably the confluence of a bunch of different things and, and it was just time. Very good. Now, when you were recording the album, did you have a feeling that this was going to be uh, the one that, uh, you know, was going to get the nationwide success? Well, I mean, we certainly were sort of teed up for the best opportunity that we had had up to that point by far. I mean, we were with RCA Records at a time when it was arguably, you know, one of the best times in that company's history to be on the roster. Um, and we had an incredible team of people there at that company who were working very hard to help us. Um, and we had never had anything like that before. So that, you know, prior to that, we, we were just sort of slugging it out on our own. So just by that, by virtue of that fact alone, we were, we were in a position to have more success than we, uh, had, had yet achieved certainly, but, um, uh, no, I don't, I don't think we could have imagined, frankly, that w we would have achieved the success that we achieved with everything you want as we were making it. There's no, there's no way. I mean, I think we knew the songs were good songs. I certainly believed in what we were doing. And I know that I had also really put in the time. It's one of the things I'm really proud of myself for is that year sort of prior to the release of everything you want i really hunkered down and and gave my 110 percent to uh try to become a better songwriter and a, be a better singer and i think you know as far as i'm concerned that effort is is, is it, it shows if you maybe look between there and back again running on ice and and everything you want and some of our fans i think rightly so were more fond of the more acoustic side of things that we had presented in the first two records but i had always been in rock bands growing up mm. um so the vertical horizon sort of more acoustic thing was uh that was the outlier for me in terms of my musical journey so for me if i almost felt like we were coming home uh when we were working on everything you want 
Um, so yeah, I, uh, um, yeah, I think, I, but I, I think certainly you'd have to credit the team of people that, that we were surrounded by, uh, greatly with, with the things that were achieved with that record. Sure. Absolutely. Now the song itself, everything you want, um, did that come quickly to you or was that something that you had to work on, you know, for a couple months or whatever? No, fortunately, you know, every now and again, they just kind of come out of the clouds and I don't, I, uh, I, I don't understand it. Although I do think of writing as a far more receptive endeavor than an active, uh, cr active creation. So um, um, I think the more you're sort of attuned to just listening to what you're here, what listening to the quietest voices inside of your head, that's, that's how I tend to think of it. Um, and and um, everything you want came to me at around, started coming to me around four o'clock in the morning, I was asleep and in or you know in some sort of a you know whatever dream state and uh and i heard the mantra that starts the song the mar 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 that bit right. and um and and i heard that in my head and i thought well that's that's pretty cool i should remember that in the morning when i wake up but i'm not going to get up now <laughs> why <laughs> would you get up when uh when when a number one song is knocking on your door um uh, so I rolled over, went back to sleep, and then 15, 20 minutes later, I heard the acoustic guitar part that, that accompanies the mantra part, and that, that was great, but not enough to get me out of bed. I heard that, I heard that in my head, and, and I rolled over again, and about 20 minutes later, I did hear in sort of complete, uh, um, uh, not unlike listening to the record now, I heard the the lead vocal the drum pattern the bass guitar the the electric guitar parts all of it kind of just like presented to me on some sort of a magic platter and wow. that was the thing that just set, you know sat me up bolt upright and got me grabbing for paper and tape recorders and all that stuff because of course there were no there were no phones back <laughs> in the day um and and so yeah it was all uh analog and old school and and fortunately i i caught it you know um because those things are they they are uh, you know um they are ephemeral they come and if you don't harness them in the moment and really try to document it and and at least for me there are some people probably who have these perfect you know <laughs> memories and they can just hold on to things but they go for me they just go away and and fortunately uh everything you want i, I you know i i held on to that one that's awesome that, a lot of artists say songwriters say yeah the 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 big hits that just they appear and they're done in 20 30 minutes and you know it just you know yeah a lot of people say the song writes itself you know so that kind yeah. of yeah well i think that that is that would sort of uh go hand in hand with that kind of more concept of being more receiving uh, of inspiration. Um, yeah, and, and then there are ones, like you say, that you just have to carve, <laughs> you know, right. hammer by hammer. You're like, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Best I ever had was like that. That was, a. Uh, I heard the melody in my head and I thought, well, that's that's a really beautiful melody. Um, admit, let me try to make something out of it. And then, and then it was like, oh boy, you gotta, gotta put the gotta time in on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, so obviously the record comes out, you have the, the four big singles, uh, from that record. Um, but I like some of the deeper cuts as well. I, I really like all of you. Uh, do you have a favorite a song from the album? Yeah. You know what? I love you say, I think you say is a, is a really neat song. I think you say is also indicative of the journey that we took as we were making that record, because when we first started <clears throat> recording that song, we made it a much heavier song, lots, lots of big electric guitars. And it never kind of breathed the way it does on the final record. And so, um, you know, working with Ben Gross, but also with Mark Endert, um, we, we found, uh, I think, a far more uh, uh, interesting way of presenting that song. And, and the verses with those sort of beautiful keyboard pads mm -hmm. from Jamie Mahobrick and uh, and Ed, Ed Toth's drum performance on that song, I think, is uh, 
is is one of the real sort of secret ingredients there because he's he's playing it like a rock drummer in the choruses but his performance in the in the verses is far more sparse and almost like a almost like a you know like a phil collins track mm. like i don't care anymore or something like that and the, the the performance is far different but the tonality there's a there's something it's less obvious than than like a traditional oh, that that's what that's what the rock drummer should obviously do on that song kind of thing it's a it's sort of like a left turn from that and and i love that so you say is one that i really love and the other one i mean i love them all i sure we've been playing we've been playing these songs live again you know uh, playing the record you know uh on our headlining shows when we can and um I love these songs. I, you know, they're, they're like family members, you know. And uh, um, but <clears throat> but uh, give you back is 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 another one for me that um, that that one of the things I love about that song is it's it's kind of small and kind of kind of you know kind of quiet, a little bit somber. And I was aware as we were making the record, I was I was always kind of waiting for the phone call, like, "Hey, Matt, <clears throat> we think you guys are doing okay on the record, but we really think you need to ditch." give you back and put something kind of peppy in its place. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> and we never got that call. And I, so I, I feel like, I feel like give you back's existence on that record is like a small little triumph, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I love that about that song. And you had mentioned all of you. And so let me mention, let me, let me talk about all of you just for a second. Yeah. Cause I love, I love that song too. <clears throat> all of you is a, is a, for me at least a good example of of me trying to get better at writing mm -hmm. so the 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 verses are are uh, a certain tonality the the pre-chorus is a is a very different tonality in terms of the the the, the harmony the 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 chordal the you know, the chords in those sections um and then the bridge uh which just kind of comes out of nowhere and is and for those for those who are not you know um sort of musicians the right. bridge is this is the thing in the middle of the song that sort of only happens once it's a section that usually comes out after the second chorus and, and it gives you just a a new sort of refreshing perspective for a second before we bring you back into either another verse or another chorus um and uh and uh yeah so the so the bridge in that song is nice and i i you know it's anyways it, it, but if you listen to that song i for me i when i listen to that song i hear myself trying to get better and i and that's that that makes me happy you know sure absolutely now yeah. are are there any plans for a deluxe edition of this album since it is the 25th anniversary you know vinyl's had a big resurgence and i don't was this ever released on vinyl i know it was more cd era in the late yeah night. no it, it, it's been released i think twice on vinyl before but that, those okay. were sort of that was years ago but yes we we've done a 25th anniversary we i should say i shouldn't say we because it's rca and sony have done a 25th anniversary repress of the vinyl and we're celebrating that and um uh uh it's uh translucent orange which is pretty cool the vinyl itself is pretty, which is cool um and uh and we're grateful to them for doing that you know so uh so that's 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 really nice but uh, beyond that there, you know it's not like there's a bunch of outtake mm. you know versions of the songs or anything you know we 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 don't have a lot of that i do have some demos from that time um which you know have circulated a little bit, uh, but they're but you know I'm not sure we might do something a little bit more officially with with them at a at a different time. But but for now we're just excited to have the the vinyl repress and uh, and to be able to be uh, you know celebrating the record and uh, and playing playing the whole record whenever whenever we can. It's 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 slightly dependent upon set times and stuff like that. But uh, it's it's really nice to be able to 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 play it again. Sure, absolutely. Now, so you formed Vertical Horizon at Georgetown University, I read, uh, back in the early 90s. Now, when did you realize you wanted to become a musician full time? Like, hey, this is something that that I could do. Well, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't until I graduated from college, really. Um, my parents put me through school, you know, my parents paid for boarding school for me, they paid for private middle school for me they paid for my boarding school they paid for my college i mean they, you know it was a, a incredible investment 
um, by my my mom and dad, and and they did the same for my brother. And so, being a professional musician was maybe not. <clears throat> um, it wasn't something I was necessarily planning on. Uh, the deal I had made with my parents was I'm going to finish my schooling and then we'll figure out what happens. I called them after I graduated from Georgetown and I said, I want to, I want to give, I, I had, I've been working at an adult daycare center for a year and doing gigs in Washington, DC on the, on the side. And, you know, I called them and I said, I, I really think I want to give this a shot. And to their credit, to their, to their incredible credit, they said, how can we help? I remember the phone call. I remember, I remember it exactly like the, you know, uh, mom and dad, I know you just sent me uh, to like Deerfield Academy and then to Georgetown University. And I can't even imagine how much that cost, although I kind of know how much that costs. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, go to grad school for psychology. I'm going to try to become a guitar player. Um, and their reaction was, how can we help? And that's just so beautiful. Awesome. Um, so, but it wasn't, I mean, I, let's, put, let's put it this way. Since I picked, picked up a guitar for the first time, it's been kind of the only thing that really felt right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so when I sit down with, it, with a guitar in my hands, I feel like I can say what I'm trying to say, which I don't, uh, I'm better at it now than, than I was then but uh, uh, it's not my forte and, and, um, and, and I feel a peace and comfort that I kind of just don't feel when I'm walking around this earth otherwise. So uh, it, was, it was a dream, uh, but the, pra the practical truth was it was not gonna come true, you know? Hmm. Um, because, because how do you do it? It's, there's an old Mainer expression, you know, I'm, I'm from Massachusetts and, and Mainers are people from Maine. And the, the Mainer expression is, you know, you, you stop a Mainer on the side of the road, you say you're, you know, trying to get, I think it's Bert and I, these old comedians, you know, the, the, you would ask them for directions on, you know, when you're lost. And the Mainer would say, you can't get there from here. That's what they'd say, you can't get there from here. Well, you can't get there from here. If you're trying to be a professional musician, it's just not possible, right? Quote, unquote. And, um, but I guess we, you know, we, what, what is it? What's the old thing that um, uh, uh, luck is when preparation meets opportunity? Mm -hmm. um, and so we certainly had uh, preparation and we certainly had opportunity and, and, and it, it came, it came true, you know, yeah. but mir miracle, miracle. <laughs> right. Yeah, you beat the odds for sure. Oh, goodness <laughs> Absolutely. Gracious. So um, looking back, who was the first artist you saw in concert and how did that impact you? My first concert ever was Van Halen mm. in, uh, it was the Diver Down tour. So is that 82? Yeah, 82, 83, uh, yeah. Um, and <clears throat> at the Worcester Centrum in Massachusetts. And Eddie had, I want to say, broken his arm or broken his wrist. So he was playing with a cast. Wow. And I remember seeing him play things on the guitar that, I certainly couldn't ever imagine any human being could ever play right. when they were in tip top shape, never mind when you've got a stinking cast on. So it was it was truly just mind blowing on every single level. And of course, the, the showmanship, the the energy, everything that you'd expect, right? A Van Halen show uh, was, you know, one of the best things that anybody could see, but certainly as a young guitar loving you know kid uh in the northeast it was just like what and um so that was my first that was my first concert and then i think my second concert uh i think maybe uh you know there were like a couple other things that didn't really count for me but the <laughs> right. next one was rush oh, wow. and and the rush show was the one that actually really was like okay those guys their music is way more advanced than I think I could ever possibly be, but I think I'm more like those guys than I'm like the the David Lee Roth and the and the crazy, you know what I mean? All the like sure. the the incredible showmanship. I felt a little bit more of a kindred spirit with with you know seeing those guys on that stage. And so if there was like the slightest thread 
that sort of could connect me with 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 a performer performer on stage i felt that connection with the guys in rush wow. and um and then of course over time would develop you know a friendship with with them and and deeply deeply uh with neil um so but yeah uh so but rush is my favorite band of all time they are my absolute favorite band and uh and so so yeah so so it was a it was cool to, to see that. And I think that would have been the signals tour. Yeah. That would have been the signals tour. Wow. Okay. Very good. Yeah. That's, yeah. But Van Halen's my favorite band. So I know exactly what you're talking about there. <laughs> I unfortunately missed the 84 tour that sold out too quick. I couldn't get tickets, but I saw the 50, oh. 50 tour. So, but <clears throat> cool. Yeah, I saw both those tours. I yeah. saw both those tours and <laughs> mind blowing. Yeah, mind blowing. Absolutely. Yeah. And then rush, uh, I'm trying to think of the, uh, Oh my gosh. Um, hold your fire. That's the first. Yeah. The rush. yeah. Cool. So, I'm, I'm right hold there with you. Great. So awesome. what, what is your favorite thing about performing live? Um, I mean, there's, there are so many things about it. So one of my best friends in the world and also one of my musical heroes is Richard Marks. Hmm. And, and he and I talk about it all the time as like vitamins, like, <laughs> a live performance for a musician is kind of like a, a shot at B12. You know, you just get this, <gasps> this energy and you feel, you feel right. There's a rightness to it. You're in your element. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And as much as I love the craft of songwriting and I love making records. And if I had to choose one or the other, I would probably choose just writing songs and, 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 and making, you know, making music. Um, but, I, but don't make me choose because I love that feeling of going out with your brothers and your sisters and, you're, and, you, and you walk on that stage and there's nothing you can't do because you are a unified, you know, uh, uh, you, are, you are a force. And, um, and that just is beautiful. The other thing that's so great about it at this stage in our careers is very often when you walk on that stage, it's to a, it's to a very sympathetic audience it's it's people who are excited that you're there so you know who doesn't want to walk onto a stage and have people go yeah that's great he's walking on the stage you know what i mean like okay yeah anybody who doesn't like that like i'm sus I, the, the suspect as uh, as they said in uh whatever the freaking movie was with affleck and damon yeah. Um, but uh goodwill hunting goodwill yeah hunting, there you go. absolutely yeah you suspect uh so good so you're going to be coming uh here to uh the cleveland area cleveland heights cane park beautiful uh do you have any memories of playing cleveland uh, throughout your career well you know one of the most surreal memories for me <clears throat> uh with cleveland was for a while one of my guitars hung in the rock and roll hall of fame mm. dude what are you talking about <laughs> That's the best, <laughs> right? Um, you know, near like, you know, it was like Alan White's drum kit or something. And like, you know, like Tom Dumont from No Doubt. And then there's my guitar. And I'm like, what? <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, the, the thing I love, I love, I love playing shows in Ohio. I love the, there's a, there's a, there's just a joy surrounding live music performances that, that, that I feel in, in your state uh, we won't slag off any other states, but sure. let's just say more than some other places. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we've always had great experiences in Cleveland. Um, and I, I uh, because of that thing with the, with the with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I mean, I'm just whenever something, whenever Cleveland comes up, like, hey, you want to play Cleveland? Yes, yes, always, <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, we love having you. Well, speaking of that, you, you're you going to be coming to town with Toad the Wet Sprocket and the Jim Blossoms. Uh, what yes. a great triple bill. Um, what, yeah. what can fans expect from the show? Well, I think, you know, first of all, I'm a huge fan of both of those bands. And I think that their their catalog is pretty astounding. Um, so I think people can expect from from them, like just fantastic songs, 
great performances. We've never toured with Toad, but by all accounts, they're a great bunch of guys. And I am excited uh, about that, excited to spend time with them. We've done a fair bit of touring with Gin Blossoms and we love those guys. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be just a great sort of family vibe. Um, you know, there's something that happens, I think, over time when you've uh, fought in the trenches to sort of rise above the, you know, um, you know, rise through the ranks, let's say, in the sure. in the music business. After a while, the, once you've sort of achieved something, there's a there's less of a competition and more of a, a quiet confidence that, hey, w you know, we 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 can we can do this. We're not that we deserve to be here, but we certainly can 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 bring what's needed here in this situation. So I think w we're gonna you know have a great time. We're we're the we're the first band, so we're gonna try to have everybody get excited and uh and um you know you know bring the evening off to a good start and uh just have a positive fun evening together it's gonna be fun sure absolutely yeah. now i think uh i saw you guys i think it was with uh the gym blossoms you played mgm a few years ago and i think you like and i can't there was another band there as well um but you guys came out together at the end and did a song or oh two. yeah are there, yeah, are I think that might have been with I think that might have been with Tonic, if I'm remember, remembering correctly. I think you're right. Correctly. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, um, there are there are there are plans for something or some things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure that it's really my place to say, you know. Right. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I, I hopefully hopefully people will see some you know something else where maybe more than one of the bands are out there. Right. Someone from more than one. I I'm really dodging this a little bit, but it's not, it's it's not really my place to say. Sure. We'll see. We'll see. Nothing like a nothing like an all star jam though. We love we love yeah. that here in Cleveland. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Come together, do a little something different. That that will be. Yeah. Cool. Well, Matt, I want to again congratulate you on the 25th anniversary of your great album, and uh, I look forward to seeing you here uh, next month at Kane Park. Terrific, Greg. Thanks for taking the time. I sincerely appreciate it. All right. Oh, I and can I? Can I also just steer people towards our Instagram yes. and, and Facebook and stuff? So a, official uh, Vertical Horizon is both our Instagram and our Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> at Vertical Horizon is our X Twitter thing. And then uh, uh, verticalhorizon.com is where you can uh, go for merch stuff and anything else. And uh, we, we, we are, we're grateful for all the support. So Absolutely. Thanks. I will get this out and uh, we will pack uh, Kane Park for you guys. All right. Thanks so much, man. All right. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Take it easy. See ya. Thanks, All man. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye.